It's been a year, Daddy. I really, really miss you. Mommy says you went to the store to get milk. Oh my god, punch my mama in the throat, karate kick my daddy in the chest, what the fuck, oh my god. Six months later. Hello. I'm here to vent to avoid again. I hope YouTube's servers can accommodate all this angst. Anyway. <clears throat> I've recently been craving some zombie-flavored entertainment. A little brain splattering, if you will. And seeing as I've always been into that sort of shit, I kind of scraped the barrel of available content. Yeah, we both know that's BS. Saying you watched all zombie movies is like saying you watched all of Amy Schumer's specials. Nobody has the time, plus the human mind can't take that much brain damage. No, it's actually quite the opposite. I'm so overwhelmed with choices I can't even commit to one form of media, let alone choose from one. Zombieland, The Walking Dead, Dying Light, Resident Evil, Not The Movies, Dead Rising, 28 Days Later, and the list goes on and on. Case in point, while there may be lots of shortages in current times, zombie-flavored entertainment is not one of them. This raised to me a few questions that have been recurring in my mind for quite some time. Those are the reason why I made this video. Why is there such a huge demand for zombie or, for that matter, disaster slash apocalypse media? Why do we as a species yearn for such a morbid thing as entertainment that depicts the fall of society as we know it? Welcome to the show. Stop. Of course, there have always been fans of the macabre. I'm one of them. Fun fact, the first known disaster movie, Fire, dates back to 1901. Morbid curiosity is definitely a thing, but let's dig deeper though. Improbable or impossible scenarios that can allegorize a more real issue also have appeal. A recent example is the movie Don't Look Up, a divisive film, admittedly, but nonetheless a fitting case in point to the type of work that uses disaster scenarios to make a not so subtle in Don't Look Up's case allegory. I'd also cite Game of Thrones or even the Flood Myth as sharper examples of the practice. Like comedy, allegories help us address taboos or otherwise sensitive issues with a deft touch. In doing so, setting the stage for, in the best scenario, a healthy discussion that finally results in a meaningful change. Another source of this bizarre need is one that is common in other genres too. Frankly, it's a reason why, among many, we love stories as a whole. The most celebrated and loved tales, fictional or otherwise, have it as their central structure, commonly referred to as the hero's journey. This story layout is, as the brilliant book The Hero with a Thousand Faces suggests, the source of nearly every narrative in history. That is because it taps an especially sensitive nerve in every human being. The need to thrive and conquer. Each one of us yearns for a sensation of overcoming incredible odds, going through hardship and coming out of it a better person. Stories, and in the scope of this video, disaster movies, offer this on a silver platter. You can put yourself in the main character's shoes and experience all their adventures, reaping the benefits minus all the risks. All of that from the comfort of your home. These are all valid answers to my question. The reasons mentioned above might as well represent all that originates this peculiar interest. Besides just wanting to see good old action and destruction, of course, I'm well aware of my over-analysis of the whole thing. Still, I kinda wanna analyze even more. I may be signing my mentally deranged contract writing this, and I'm likely alone, or in very ill company even thinking it. I barely found anyone online who shares my point of view. I am firm in my opinion, however, that it is an internalized desire that a lot of people have, especially those in a not so fortunate places in life, sadly a majority in this age. The hidden reason why we love the stuff depicting societal fall is because, plain and simple, we want society to fall. Look, I know how bad this sounds. Please, I urge you not to call the authorities and just please hear me out. In truth, this statement isn't to be taken literally. Almost nobody, me included, actually wants societal fall, even if, like yours truly, they claim to. 
If the world as we know it were to end, with volcanoes spewing lava, earthquakes and tsunamis ravaging cities and tornadoes ripping out your Prius and yeeting it into Brazil, it wouldn't be such a trip. If Y2K actually happened or a solar flare hit us square in the face and our electronics were fried, driving us back into the Middle Ages, it wouldn't be as pretty or as epic as in the movies. That would mean no running water, stable food, sanitation, electricity, heating, cooling, law enforcement or justice and security as a whole. And most importantly, no internet. Oh my God! Now I don't know about you, but I'd rather keep my 21st century amenities, thank you very much. A fall into total anarchy would cut all that off and quickly. I believe I speak for most of us when I say, we're not ready for that. Now, with that dissuasive speech finished, let me explain why we want societies to fall. Kind of. Throughout history, empires, nations, and other types of civilizations rose and fell due to different reasons. I don't intend to explore those reasons, but nonetheless, something is of interest to my point. These great societies, for however long they lasted, eventually fell. Either they were defeated by outside forces or inwardly dissolved. The point is, they fell all the same. With their collapse came, for the most part, the end of a way of life for the people in said civilizations or even the peninsula they occupied as a whole. When ancient Rome arguably collapsed in 476 AD, the world around it fell into what historians call the Dark Ages. This period in time saw very little scientific and cultural advancement. People living in that age led lives similar to those before Rome, a lifestyle that morphed into the feudal system of the Middle Ages. I'll also briefly mention the Bronze Age collapse and the total 180 it brought around the area of the Near East. With cities largely gone and literacy rates closing on zero, a stark contrast to the period before that collapse. These examples confirm what I said earlier, that collapse brings with it death, starvation and misery. But what I intentionally omitted was what came after these periods of strife. After the Bronze Age collapse came the Iron Age, a significant time in history. More important was the Renaissance which came right after the Dark Ages, a period of scientific and social advancement that paved the way for a myriad of discoveries and innovations we take for granted today. Astronomy, the re-emergence of classical philosophy, Shakespeare and the printing press, just to name a few. All of this after a long period of anguish. The picture I'm trying to paint is that of a phoenix's life cycle. Dying a fiery death and rising from its ashes stronger than ever. Societies throughout history have done just that. And history, as the saying goes, tends to repeat itself. Our civilization and life as we know it is bound to eventually face a rebirth. And this brings me to the core of my argument. That a lot of people nowadays think now is the right time for such a thing. Now is the time for a social reset. The prominence of the Doomer, please hold your laugh, and our pop culture as a whole is perhaps the first indicator of this simmering sentiment sweeping the masses, a fatalist outlook on the world, deeming our existence a hopeless ordeal, a doomed fate. You can see this in the works of art of our time, in comedy, be that stand-up or memes, movies and music and all the rest, the subject of our impending end is always felt, if even slightly. I can try to hypothesize on the reasons behind such a view, but keep in mind that this and all that came before it is only the ravings of a severely underqualified guy. The world today is plagued, literally in recent times, by a slew of problems left to us by our wonderful parents and grandparents. Climate change, deforestation, inflation, overpopulation, malnutrition, social disparity, inequality, poverty, religious extremism, the possibility of a devastating nuclear war, refugees... <gasps> the list goes on and on. The point remains the same. The world is far from okay, and according to the global sentiment, it'll only get worse. From this lens, one can understand the perceived extreme pessimism of the anarcho-primitivists of the world, those who would see us devolve through a process of deindustrialization, returning to our grassroots and denying the myth of progress. One can also, from this lens, see them for who they really are. Optimists. The people vying for a better future. A chance at an afterlife when, not if, this dying world passes over. 
Granted, the concept of a better future is entirely subjective, and the one suggested just now could be perceived as a dystopia to be avoided at all costs. But it cannot be argued that every one of us wishes for a better future, and that a large and growing portion of people see drastic change in our way of life as the sole method to achieve that. We can then deduce that, at least in our subconscious, we wish for it all to just reset, permitting us to start over from a clean slate of sorts, placing the foundation for our future instead of building atop the shaky one those before us left behind. That is why we want society to fall, that is why we enjoy watching it do so. We simply want a glimpse into the other side, a daydream of how things would be after we navigated through all the anguish. After we defeated all the evils that come out of our world's end, and we can finally bask in the calm after the storm. As with all my videos, I would like to point out again that this is only me speculating with very little proof and that I'm not advocating for any society death-driven activities or beliefs. The shrine dedicated to the Unabomber Manifesto I have in my garage is only a practical joke made by my buddy Eric. I hope you found this enjoyable. I certainly did writing it. And I thank you for watching. This has been Internet Victim. Signing off.